beginning today on Anheuser-Busch. So the company stock price, Bud, it's really kind of struggling here. It has not seen the loftier levels of where it had been before the entire Dylan Mulvaney scandal broke out. In fact, if you look at it back around April 1st, it was trading around nearly $67 a share. I'm looking at it today and, uh, Oh, now it's down in the 64 range. Oh, dear. So it had been actually at 66.57. Now it's hovering around $64 a share. So things not looking very good there for shares of Bud. That's Anheuser-Busch, which, by the way, is a giant conglomerate. It's not the American beer company that you once thought it was or what it once was, right? It all changed back in 2008 when the company was sold for $52 billion to a Brazilian beer company which was the merger between a Brazilian and Belgian company. So now you get a multinational conglomerate that clearly does not understand its customer. You know how we know Bud Light does not understand its customer. Take a look at sales. (laughs) They just keep going down. It closed us down. 26%. That would be for the week ending April 22nd. Most recent numbers. They just came out. Today. Now, if you look at volume the week before, it had actually declined to 21.1%. So there's a trend here. The week before, I believe, was down 17%. So 17, 21.1, 26.1. People don't want your beer. And it's no wonder. I mean, all they can think about is this. I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month. But it turns out it has something. In contrast, you look at Coors Light, well, their volume is up 13.3%. You look at Miller Light, and similar story over there, they're upwards of 13% at 13.6% of a gain. So look who's going up, look who's going down. That explains a lot. You know, one funny thing (laughs) that just came out is that the company had to actually disable comments on their commercial. They uploaded their commercial that they had run during the NFL draft on Thursday night, last Thursday night. They uploaded it to YouTube and apparently people were so upset. It just was this outpouring of of people furious with the company. So they had to disable comments. So if you go there, you're not going to be able to leave a comment. You can leave one here, of course. I've actually read a lot of them. And, you know, it's really, it's kind of heartbreaking. Like everybody's got these great stories about how Bud Light played some kind of monumental role in their life. I don't know what that says about you guys. But anyway, it's sweet. And you guys are ticked. As you should be. I'm ticked. I mean, it's just kind of like they keep pushing us and you can only push us so far. Right. And that's why I like when I see things like this, because it shows the power of the consumer, the consumers fighting back. Speaking of which, speaking of the power of the consumer, we've also seen a similar story going on over at Fox. You know, they 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 sent uh, Tucker packing and the audience went packing itself. So they are not so interested in the 8 p.m. program. Brian Kilmeade was in all last week. They get a new guy in this week. We'll see how it goes. But I think it's a it's a question of trust, right? Like viewers get upset. Beer drinkers get upset. And yet these companies, they don't learn their lesson. They keep on doing it. Are we losing? 